Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation with complex numbers. We have z squared minus z equals i and we're going to be solving for z values. Now, this problem comes from Matt Carnevale. I hope I said it right. Thank you for the suggestion. Let's go ahead and solve this problem and keep it up. All right, keep them coming. So we have the square root, it's not the square root, z squared, okay, I forgot the problem already, minus z equals i. Well, are they the same? Yes, if you just subtract i from both sides, you can also think about it this way, like you can factor it and do you think i is factorable, right? In this case, you can guess and check, but guessing would be hard. So we're gonna go ahead and put everything on the same side and solve for z, let's do it. Now, this is a quadratic equation. Therefore, we can use the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula works like this. If you have a z squared plus bz plus c equals zero, then z values can be found by negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Does that look familiar? Yes, because we use the same thing for real numbers. Doesn't matter, solutions can be real or complex but, or I should say real and non-real, because complex numbers are also real. No, it's the other way around. Real numbers are also complex. Yeah, it's the other way. Anyways, you get the idea. We can go ahead and use this formula. In this case, a is one, b is negative one, and z is negative one. We have a quadratic equation with complex coefficients or imaginary coefficients, which means we're not gonna have real solutions, right? Is there a equation that has real solutions but complex coefficients? I doubt it, maybe there is. Probably not. Anyways, from here z is going to be negative b, which is 1, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative i, so it's going to be 1 plus 4i. By the way, this number comes up a lot, square root of 1 plus 4i, that's what we're going to explore a little bit here, because it's not very straightforward, right? So these solutions would be acceptable, but the biggest question or the million dollar question is what's the square root of 1 plus 4i by the way a complex number has two square roots except for zero right that's the exception and if you find one of them the other one is just going to be the opposite in other words plus minus will take care of it so we can kind of focus on the principal square root or maybe the the one that with a positive sign i don't know something like that but let's just find one and the other is uh, going to be negated okay how do you find the square root of 1 plus 4i though? Like how would you find the square root of i? You can write this in polar form and then go for it. This is easy. Or if you had 2i or if you had 1 plus i, you could easily convert these to polar forms because when you plot these numbers, you can find the angle right away. But with this one, it's a little different because if you think about it in the complex plane, what does 1 plus 4i look like? It looks like the point 1 comma 4, right? One unit here, one, two, three, four units here. So it's kind of like this. We can go ahead and connect it to the origin, right? And it's modulus if you call this number w. I don't know. Uh, the absolute value of w is going to be square root of 17. So this is going to be the absolute value of w. And then what about the angle, the theta, right? So you do need two things to be able to write it in polar form because you can write w as basically absolute value of w times e to the power i times the argument of w. Argument of w in this case is theta, right? So we kind of need to find theta. What do we know about theta though? We know it's tangent, right? So tangent theta is 4 over 1 or just 4. Well, guess what? When you take the square root of a complex number, what are you doing? You're cutting the argument in half and you're square rooting the modulus. So in other words, the square root of 1 plus 4i is going to look something like this. The square root of the square root of 17, which is the fourth root of 17, right? Times e to the power i times half of argument of w. So whatever argument of w is, we have to cut that in half. In other words, theta over 2. Well, if you know tangent theta is equal to 4, can you find half of that? Yes. There's a really good way of finding it. Let me show you geometrically this method I just think is awesome. So 
This is theta. And we know that tangent theta is 4, so we can kind of put 4 and 1. Definitely not drawn to scale at all, but just let's bear with me on this. Obviously, this is square root of 17. And remember, it came up in the modulus, right? Now, we're going to go ahead and take this point, extend this segment. I can, I guess, refer to these as segment AC. I'm going to extend it away from C, not towards A, but away from A, I should say. How much? I want to extend it as long as BC so that it becomes square root of 17 again. And then let's call this point D and then connect B and D. When you connect them, you're going to get another hypotenuse, right? And you're also going to get a isosceles triangle, which means these angles are congruent. And from exterior angle theorem, the sum is theta, which means this is half of theta, which means I can find tangent theta over 2 from here very easily. What is tangent theta over 2? That is 4 over square root of 17 plus 1. Let's go ahead and rationalize this. Multiply by conjugate. And you get 4 times the square root of 17 minus 1 divided by 17 minus 1 is 16 divided by 4. And you're going to get something like this. So tangent theta over 2 is going to be this one, which is basically the argument for the square root. So we got the tangent, but how do you find the angle from here? If you call this alpha, let's say, how do you find alpha? You must use arc tangent. Make sense? So alpha from here is just going to be arc tan of square root of 17 minus 1 over 4. This is the argument for our square root. And what about the modulus? The modulus is the square root of square root of 17. That should be the fourth root of 17, right? So here's the problem. We couldn't convert this easily because this is not a special angle. So the, ang the angle whose tangent is 4 is not special, right? If we had a 1 half, no, not for tangent. Tangent, if tangent was 1 or square root of 3, I guess that would be a special one. But anyways, there is another way to approach this. Let me show you real quick. Because here's what we could we could have done. We could just set this to a plus bi because that's the name of this channel, right? And then square both sides. When we square both sides, we're going to be getting 1 plus 4i is a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. Now the real part is going to equal 1. And this is going to equal 4, which means we have the following system. a squared minus b squared is 1 and ab is equal to 2. Now from here, however you want to solve it, there's so many ways to approach it, but I can isolate b as 2 over a, replace this b with 2 over a, and get 4 over a squared equals 1, and then kind of set a squared equals to c, and then from here we get c minus 4 over c equals 1, c squared minus 4 is c, and then solve for c, and you're going to get the solutions, and then a squared equals c by square rooting it, of course, a, b, c are real, right? Because they are the real and imaginary parts, or they make up the real and imaginary parts, and so on and so forth. But this is a long story. And this brings us to the result from Wolfram Alpha. And yay, these are the complex solutions. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.